show of hands, who has besides that handsome man got in the middle there, Dan? Who's ever heard of Seri before? <laughs> okay. And of those people, who thinks they could tell anybody what goes on there? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think so. Okay, so uh, thank you for this opportunity to give you a quick run through what actually goes on here. But I'm going to start at the end. So this young lady, Pauline Zeneca, is my rock star. She is a, uh, when I first met her, she was a PhD student, I'm just going to this now. PhD student working in melanoma research, and she was a career academic. She came to Seri, she did a few things here, and she would constantly say, I don't know what I'm doing here, I'm so out of my comfort zone, this feels weird. Anyway, uh, she is now doing everything she can to translate her research into changing people's lives. And that's what Sarah is about. It's about creating full anchors who can change their view on their possibilities and how they can really make the world a better place. There was no doubt that that's been the focus all along. It was, it's just different now. So instead of writing paper, getting another grant, writing paper, getting another grant, and that's for life. She's now translating her research to make a difference in people's lives in a very real way. She wants to stay happy. She wants to make sure that her technology gets out and is accessed by people like us and that the business stays in Western Australia. Wouldn't that be awesome? Instead of licensing it to a big farmer and then go and make sure loads of money somewhere else. <laughs> and our technology is lost. We do that very well here. Um, just to give you stats uh, in the... Um, Growth Innovation Index figures for uh, creating knowledge. Australia does an awesome job amongst the OECD countries. Pretty great. We can hold our heads up high, but I doubt that anyone in this room would doubt that. However, we are last in amongst the OECD countries of translating the knowledge we create into something useful to others. If you ever anyone else do that for us. So that's another thing that Sarah's trying to do, is to change that. So, She's gone from being a career academic to wanting to change the world of technology and start a company. And she's just awesome. She made it to the front section of the business news, which happened to be page 64 of the West Australia. I'm still not happy, but we're getting there. So you recognise this picture? It's home, right? Probably paradise on earth. One of the most beautiful cities in the world. It's a great place to live. This is what we don't want. So remember all those headquartered businesses on the tops of all the uh, buildings? Resources is kind of dominating our economy here. Uh, in fact, funding in the resources economy is crowding out funding in anything and everything else. So when there's nothing left to dig up, and when those headquartered countries go off to Brazil or wherever they find more of what they're looking for, what are we left with? That's the problem that Sarah is trying to address. And with your help, creating the leaders of the future and the industries of the future in Australia. The future is in your hands, really. So we're going to help you finish the job. Because we don't want the Mad Max scenario. <laughs> so our focus is university um, graduates, students that have decided to go through that academic, at least graduate, and then move into who knows what. So we're all about enabling those people not only to believe in themselves, but to really change the world with their technologies. And at the moment, um, the statistics for university graduates to go on and do a postgraduate degree, to go on and become a professor is less than 1% of those researchers will do that. So what do they do? Are we preparing them for the future? And the future's it's changing at a very fast pace. It's different now than it was when I started talking about it. So how can we prepare these guys? Well, we need to give them a diverse set of skills, not just make sure they know everything about very little, which is what they tend to do, unless they can't afford a degree. So I've told you why. And that's a big thing about how we, um, we work with the researchers and students that come through series. We start with why. Because when you start talking about 
the how and the what, you lose people. If I started talking to you about the molecular genetics of cystic fibrosis, I can see delays over from here. But if I told you that I was helping young people or parents, uh, carriers, anyway, the story is very different. What we're trying to do here is bring together an ecosystem of policy, of government, of universities, of investors and businesses, as well as the participants in our program. And I have to say, the program is a last. Because when I tell you we have an education and training program, well, you know all about those. That's really not very unique. But why we're doing it is. So we're in the middle. We're trying to help develop new companies, new entities. We're not that interested in working with uh, small to medium enterprises that have already got loads of money and loads of customers. They just want to launch into uh, the rest of the world. And we're certainly not working with the major companies that want to take a few percent off the bottom line and Jobs in the process. We want to start new stuff. We want to create the leaders out of the industry in the future and to help support them to grow and take over the world. Of course, model domination. So, we're an independent organisation. We're just down the road from the University of Western Australia. They are absolutely our partners, as are all of the other universities and research, research organisations, but we're independent. You might have heard of a guy called Charlie Bass. Charlie Bass is, um, has made a, uh, a great life for himself here in Western Australia with the help of the resources economy and knows all about the boom and bust of that economy and how reliant we are in Western Australia on that economy. And he wants to do something about it. And Sarah is his vision. And when he and I had a cup of coffee one day and he shared his vision with me, it very quickly became mine as well. So uh, with set Seri up as a charity, we're not a co-working space, we're building a community that supports each other to make a real difference in the world. And it's not easy. Um, walk down the corridor here, you would have seen the, um, the pictures as you walk down the corridor on the offices. Those offices are up for our startup companies. So when they've gone through the education training program, they really want to focus in on their, uh, their thing, they can move into an office. Uh, so the other thing that makes us a little different in the companies that we support that take no equity, we don't own any IP, we just have to make sure these guys really make a difference in the world, follow their dreams, be the best they can be. That's our familiar. So this is the program. Uh, I'm not going to go into the detail, there's a lot in my, on that slide I know, um, but I will be around at breaks, so please if you want to have a chat about Serial if you like. So we start with what we call our boot camp, which is what we've donated to you guys as a prize. It's two days and it's about how to think, not what to think. We do not focus on your idea, we do not focus on the invention, we focus on you and the team and the importance of that. We focus on your values and how important they are. We focus on your personal brand, um, the soft skills, um, way before we get started on how much money we get. And in fact, if Charlie was here, he would tell you, in fact, if, we, if you were interested in Seri and you are interested in making a million dollars, you would say, well, yes, there's the problem. Because if you're here for money, it's probably the wrong reason. If you're here because you want to make the world a better place and you've got an awesome solution for a really shitty problem, the money will come, right? So this is uh, just, I guess it's preschool for business. Uh, the next two sections are a 14-week program where we get into the nitty-gritty of uh, commercialization of technologies and then startup formation. We also have a mentor program that we, uh, we brought from MIT, which is a team mentor program. So it's not a mentor face-to-face, -face, it's three mentors. Each of them has a different set of skills and brings something different to the table. So the mentors have a conversation and come up with quite a unique solution. And here's my rock stars. I've got more than one. Pauline is my very favourite, but I'm not supposed to have favourites. Right? <laughs> uh, these guys had an office here at Sarri, and um, Haya was talking about the diversification of industries and the importance of life sciences. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what these guys do, <coughs> and then um, I'll let you get on with your day. So this is uh, Gerard Pauline. He's a Professor at Murdoch University, and he's a nanobiotechnology guy. And he is just the most incredible inventor. 
His current project is working on uh, nanotechnology to create enamel so that we never have to have another filling. That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, you're working way too slowly for my liking. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, Paul Nergi, he came from the, uh, this is school at UWA and he has a light board. You know, you're interested in this. So he doesn't have a white board, he doesn't have a black board, he has a white, a light board. So it's perspex and this, it's surrounded by an LED strip. And when you write on that glass, it's perspex with um, neon colored textures, because of the uh, LED, the light just bangs out. He puts a, um, a GoPro on the front of it and films himself so that when he's writing, it's backwards, but the filming reverses it. So that when you're sitting at home watching his lecture, you can see his face and what he's writing, and you can read what he's writing. How cool is that? Awesome. So, you know, if, if we are really outsourcing um, education and you want to sit and look at your lecturer, wouldn't that be great? Right? Uh, these guys are working on soil health. Um, it's a rhizobium, particularly interested in um, legumes and making sure that the right bacteria in the soil for the uh, best outcome. <laughs> this is my last one. This is Marion Stern. She saves lives for a living. Uh, I mean that literally. Marion Stern is a professor at uh, Cell Therapies Unit in Northwest Hospital. She's been developing a process for isolating and uh, preparing uh, stem cells for transplant. So her main line of work is with uh, bone marrow transplant patients, but she's developed a cure for Crohn's disease. So the health service can't afford to give us all a cure to Crohn's disease. So and it takes a long time, so her path to market is to set up her own company and go through all the legal procedures and legislation so she can do that herself. Quite amazing. So she can isolate bone marrow from a healthy person and create <coughs> enough, of, enough tissue to uh, transfer it into unrelated, unmatched recipients. Uh, these guys, another agriculture group, they're working on Reducing the amount of fertilizer that farmers use. So at the moment, most farmers will just spread fertilizer over everything, the same amount everywhere. And these guys are trying to reduce the waste and the over fertilization by making sure that fertilizer only goes where it's really needed and you get less where you don't need it so much and more where you do. Uh, these guys have an app. Um, they're a little bit different to our usual, more deep tech uh, research <coughs> stuff. But they have an app that connects uh, students to like to tutors. So having come from the university, they've got a lot of mates within the university sector who are graduating who are the tutors, and they're connecting them with high school students, for example, who are looking for a match to meet their needs. So they get a biography, skill sets of the uh, tutors are, are there, and uh, they are the real man for life. And these guys, I don't know uh, who here still gets the West Australian newspaper. They say they have a massive distribution. I'm not so sure. Did you read the weekend paper? Did you see my guys? Oh, they read the paper. So they're in the business section, kind of close to the end. It's always buried. Yeah, Tier 15. Uh, they moved out of home, this home. About four weeks ago now. So they came here just after we opened the doors, which was August 2016. We didn't have a program. The lights were working, yes. The water was working, yes. And they needed somewhere to go. So they came in. They've since done the program and they're the first ones to move in and then to move out. They came with three ideas one that was matching the current technology, one that was a bit, bit, bit better than the current technology. And the third one, which they called their moonshot. And they now have version four or five of their moonshot. They have over a million dollars of investment and they have a couple of awesome customers that are giving them their injury. So that's what Ceres is all about, is giving people a place to do awesome things and change the world. So I'm going to stop there.
Thank you very much. I hope you have an awesome day today.